একাত্তর সংযোগে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আপনাদের সাথে আছি মিথিলা ফারজানা আজকের একাত্তর সংযোগে আসলে আরও একবার বিশেষ ভাবে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি কারণ আজ একাত্তর সংযোগে আমরা যাকে অতিথি হিসেবে পেয়েছি তিনি নিজেও একজন বিশেষ মানুষ মিসাইল ম্যান অফ ইন্ডিয়া ভারতের একাদশতম রাষ্ট্রপতি এবং পরমাণু বিজ্ঞানী ডক্টর এ পি জে আব্দুল কালাম আজকে আমাদের অতিথি এই মানুষটিকে আসলে কাছে পাওয়াটা তার সাথে কথা বলতে পারাটাও একটা সৌভাগ্যের বিষয় সেই সৌভাগ্য আজকে একাত্তর পেয়েছে এবং এই মানুষটি এমন একজন মানুষ যিনি ভারত রত্ন পদ্মশ্রী সহ ভারতের সর্বোচ্চ সকল সম্মানে ভূষিত দু হাজার সাল থেকে উনি অবশ্য অন্য একটা আন্দোলন নিয়ে ব্যস্ত তিনি ভারতের দুর্নীতির বিরুদ্ধে হোয়াট আই ক্যান গিভ ইউ মুভমেন্ট বা এই আন্দোলনে ব্যস্ত রয়েছেন ভারতের নতুন প্রজন্মকে নিয়ে তিনি এই আন্দোলন শুরু করেছেন এই মানুষটির বিভিন্ন চিন্তা এবং তার জীবনে নানা দিক নিয়ে আজকের একাত্ম সংযোগে আমরা তার সাথে কথা বলবো চলুন যাই APJ Abdul Kalam served as the 11th president of India from 2002 to 2007. Indian people know him as a missile man. APJ Abdul Kalam was born in 1931 into a poor family in Rameswaram, Tamil Nadu, a southern state of India. To help his family, Abdul Kalam had to distribute newspaper after school. But her work helped him reach one of the biggest colleges in India. His dedication in college helps him become a scientist. As a scientist, he created Agni, Prithvi, Akash, Trishul and Nag missiles. Before he became a president of India, he received numerous awards including Padma Bhushan, Padma Bibhushan and Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian honor in 1997. Besides being a scientist, Dr. Kalam is also a poet and a music lover. Above all, he is on a mission to ignite the young minds for national development by meeting high school students at home and abroad. and welcome to our show. Um, so you are currently working with the young people, young people of India and all over the world. So, And whenever you talk to them, you tell them to dream big. What actually makes a man to follow his dream? Well, I, why it's a dream, according to me. It's a, it's a young people have to have a mission in life mission in life and uh, there are three aspects in it only any young mind I uh, I have met so far 18 million youths last two decades all below 20 now I found they have a ability young people whether it's Bangladesh or India or any nation the young has got one unique quality, they can think big, because they don't have bias, and they can think big. First one, there are three aspects are there in three. First one, they must possess creativity, possess creativity. Hmm. Uh, creativity comes from thinking, and thinking comes from knowledge. After all, young people in the school, oh. what they are getting, acquiring the knowledge. If they are great teacher, they are fortunate. Now, second is uh, righteousness in the heart. 
is very important for we our citizens, whether India or Bangladesh. There should be righteousness in the heart. Where there is righteousness in the heart, there is a beauty in the character. That is a dream of every nation. And uh, this is possible with three people. Righteous in the heart comes father, mother, family. And the family in a spiritual environment, not everybody. Then only they can give righteous in the heart. Father, mother, a spiritual environment. And third one, the great primary school teacher. Primary school teacher. These are the three people who provide a righteousness in the heart. Third element is, of course, courage, the education and the family environment and the nation. All the three provide for young people courage. Courage to think different, courage to invent or courage to invent a new philosophy and a poetry if possible. And these are the unique traits one should have to dream big, the three things should have. Courage to be creative. So, um, and the righteous in the heart. Values. Okay. So, um, when we talk about knowledge in this country, and I'm quite sure about in the whole subcontinent, we are hearing that every day the young people are losing interest in science. Is that true? Young people are getting too much attracted with market economy. Well, I have seen whether every nation in the tenth class, that is when they reach fifteen, age fifteen, they have to select the subject. Mm -hmm. Okay? They have to select the subject. This is true in Bangladesh. Whether science route and engineering or medical route or humanity route or management route, four choices that they it's not a young people problem, you see. It is a parents. They want their children in a better condition. After all, parents get loan to educate their children. They want to see the educate the children get a proper employment and the marriage market is good, the employment market is good. Okay? So that is a parent wish. So I personally believe the dream of young people mostly driven by up to age 17. With a family. Family. So we have to change the mind of the family. Science is a beautiful thing. After all, what is science? This, you see this light, no? See this light. When you see the light and bulb, we remember Thomas Alva Edison. Okay? And or when the telephone bell rings, you remember the, 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 uh, the Alexander Graham. Graham Bell. We remember that. So our people allowed to become a unique people. Unique people not only in Bangladesh, in the, in the subcontinent in the world, they should think of. But what the parents would do if uh, their children are not getting proper job uh, with science background? Well, science background sometimes helps go to the engineering. After all, they take science in templates to physics, chemistry, mathematics. It's a science. After all, science, two years they have to specialize. So with the hope of engineering. Another branch is management. Another branch is medical. After all, medical also they study by by. Uh, Bio bioscience, bioscience, uh, botany, and uh, mathematics and chemistry, all they learn. Mm. So science up to the age uh, 17 is there. Beyond that they move to different area of professional uh, courses. So my feeling is, still I have seen, my experience is, 10 to 20 percent of the people young people at the age of 15, if they are given option by their parent, they will go for physics or chemistry or mathematics. So parents have to be very generous. Okay, I will, I will see that my children specialize in their love. They will do very well. 
I have seen many children, what they love, what the parents allowed them to do that, that helped them shine much better persons. It means that young people are not losing actually interest. In fact, the families are leading them to... Circumstances of the national circumstances and the parents decide their future. Mm -hmm. But okay. some students come out persuasion. Persuasion makes the some student to win with their parents to, to go for a basic science. I have seen. Sir, uh, India has progressed a lot, Bangladesh has progressed a lot, but despite all this progress, these countries actually they are facing a big disparity between the people of center and the people of periphery. So how do you see it? See, I, I have a feeling, after all, states make the country. States, every state, if it is developed, nation is developed. It's not the reverse. Nation developed, states developed. So according to me, it's essential thing is the mission is states get developed and and nation gets developed. For example, in India, I am promoting a program called Pura. Uh -huh. Pura means providing urban amenities rural area. Now we are, Indian government has taken it up as an important program. So there, what we do? We are a billion people. 700 million people live in the rural area. So we have to ensure to give them physical connectivity, uh, electronic connectivity, and knowledge connectivity leading to the economic connectivity. So I have divided the whole nation oh. into 7,000 blocks, 7,000 pura centers. You give them physical connectivity, electronic connectivity, knowledge connectivity, the population will be 2,000 to 5,000 people. Then the economic connectivity will come. So, uh, the, the, the Pura, providing a <coughs> rural area, it's a state-based, state-based. Mostly, uh, state only has got people. State only has got uh, all the facilities. So, we are driving through states. State and uh, nation. So, sir, do you really think that uh, news, eh? uh, news, these are really necessary for the countries like India and, I mean, the countries which are having the similar state of economy. Well, I don't know. See, I can say that uh, if you see our history, Indian history, of course, Indian history is history of subcontinent. Oh. Oh. And if you see 5,000 years, 4,400 years the continent went ruled by other king kingdoms. Other kingdoms. Afghanistan, Persia, Britain, and Dutch, French, everybody ruling this country. Okay? They were ruling this country. Only 600 years the subcontinent people Chandragupta Maurya's time, that kingdom ruled 600 years. Otherwise, we were ruled. Oh. So, I am convinced as a technologist, strength respects strength. That means a minimum deterrent essential. You should not do all, for example, India's nuclear weapon country, but we have got a fair doctrine. The doctrine is no first use. Okay. Oh, oh. Second one, we have a doctrine that the whole world should go for for no the disarmament. Oh. That means no nuclear weapon should be there. Oh. Fortunately, the trend has started. The two nations which have got uh, two group of nations have got a lot of nuclear weapons, ten thousand nuclear weapons, oh. and they have started a, a treaty recently. They have signed in two zero one zero to bring 10,000 nuclear warheads to bring down to 70 percent, 50 to 70 percent in, in a decade's time. It's a good trend. All nations like Bangladesh, India and many nations should support that idea and bring it to zero nuclear warheads. That's what we should do. Okay? How do you see the future of 
space science in India after the successful Mars See, mission? India's space program is highly people-oriented. People-oriented. And for example, we go years in Venus orbit, if you put the satellite, there are transponders that do communication, TV, met with them, and, uh, and it wants the what type of cyclone or anything will happen. So it's a people-oriented. Of course we spend small amount, okay. like the Chandrayaan, going to Moon, going to Mars, orbiting Moon, Mars, because after all, we don't want Moon or Mars to be a property of few nations. Okay. Of course. Huh? We want course. ownership. Some mm -hmm. continents should have ownership. So that's the idea. Okay? Mm. We want to discover something new. For example, Indian um, Chandrayaan uh, did find traces of water in mm. Mars. We don't know. Already some photos started coming. Some new thing will start coming. We hope that, sir. Um, I, know it. I would like to know about the Bangladesh-India relationship. How do you think that? Um, what should be the focus of the governance? Actually, can we continue the friendly ties and bring the relationship to new heights? See, I personally believe the India-Bangladesh, we belong to the same, born out of the same cradle. We belong to the same cradle. Do you know cradle? Of course. The child. Mm. So we are born together. And our civilization, culture, history, people, language, all are similarity. Mm. But both nations, they have to do one thing. That's my dream. The dream is, see, 60, 70, nearly about 45 to 55 percent below poverty line. So in a decade's time, this, they should remove the poverty. Employment potential should increase, educational potential should increase, and health care should increase. This is the target. Both nations work together, collaborate with each other. How do, I, how do I lift the people who are below poverty line? That should be a great mission, according to me. I have developed what is called World Knowledge Platform. Uh -huh. This World Knowledge Platform focuses, you take the core competence of Bangladesh, core competence of India, try to see whether this core competence in certain area we can bring together, bring together benefit of the both nations. Okay. So this is what idea I appreciate. So do you think that uh, the focus would be actually to increase trade and investment or what should be the focus? No, I, my India focus is change of mind. Change of mind. Change of mind is, is not an economy I am talking. Mm. I am talking how do you lift the people from the poverty. You see, if you go to the deep, I am coming from a village. So if you go to deep in the villages, they have their unique culture unique core competence, but we have to see whatever Dhaka or New Delhi has got, the amenities, the urban amenities, reach surrounding the Dhaka, surrounding mm -hmm. the New Delhi. That's called Pura. So I pushing that idea of Pura. People in the center. So I felt uh, that India and Bangladesh work together in the big mission of Pura providing urban amenities in rural area because we have got 70 percent of the people live in the rural area. Same thing Bangladesh also, mm -hmm. uh, 60 to 70 percent. So we have to uplift, we have to uplift them to the urban area. Urban, what uplift, uplift, uplift power, water supply and the education. All this in employment potential, we should reach that rural area. The facilities they should be provided. Uh, so how to increase this communication, sir? The communication between the people, the contact from people to the people. See, I, I don't know, you should be young enough to understand that the social media oh. cut across all the politics, okay? Cut across all the religious aspects. 
cut across everything and they communicate. They communicate. It all depends for what the communications. So good messages should communicate. So social media, what media India and Bangladesh should use for for ignite our young minds. You are fifty percent of the people, young people, in India also. So what you have to do is social media we both nations should utilize mm-hmm. to ignite the young people for great missions. Great missions. Yesterday I was addressing about six hundred university students. They asked me a lot of questions. Or not the questions. You see, you want to see the employment potential when you go out of the university. We are the seekers of employment. Tell me, Mr. Kalam, how do I become the employment generator? This is one of the questions Bangladesh girl asked. That is, universities generate employment, employment seekers. Hmm. Tell us, is a Bangladeshi girl ask, tell us, Kalam, how do you make university can make employment generators? Employment generators. Fantastic question. So, sir, sir, what is the answer? My answer is every university they give a degree after four years or five years. One and a half years, thirty percent of the time you cut, okay, from the syllabus. And that's thirty percent of the time you give to a professional expertise or skill set. So they get a skill set one and a half years, the same university. When they come out of the university, they get one degree, one diploma on employability. Okay? So that means when the day they come out of the university, employability assured. Okay. Sir, we don't have much time. Some yeah. last yeah. few I'm words. Guy. I'm guy. <laughs> uh, no, some last few words for our viewers, for the people of the country. Particularly, I for a young viewers. How many young viewers are there in your uh, in your TV setup? Young, how many young people see your TV? I think uh, 50%, 50 to 60 percent. 50 percent. I got a message. The message is from uh, Jalaluddin Rumi. Jalaluddin Rumi, a great Sufi saint in 13th century. Persian poet. I have uh, modified. The message is wings to fly. Okay? And I recite this. I am saying, I have all the people to say. In your TV, you can tell you that it will go like this. I am born with potential. The young fellow will say, I am born with potential. I am born with goodness and trust. I am born with ideas and dreams. Ideas and dreams. I am born with greatness. I am born with wings. I am not meant for crawling because I have wings. I fly, fly, fly. This may be a simple thing. Okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much God for giving us time.